Here's the Pianella stones. So these are the old handmade terracotta tiles. You see them everywhere in Italy and uh, obviously they're vintage now so they're probably I don't know 60 70 years old maybe not as old as that maybe 40 I don't know exactly because there's nothing to say how old they are not like a London brick. What I'm going to use these for is to sit on top of the, um, the stone I'm putting in. This is purely decorative um, which is just a choice I've made so it just gives a uh, this is the way I want to do um, the uh, the opening here so the the two stones will sit on top of each other like that so I've chosen two reasonably flat ones you never get these terribly flat up there you can see those two stones I've just explained exactly the same di dimensions exactly the same length and width So a nice wide chisel and a club hammer and uh, give it a couple of starting, there you go. All four are done, um, they're more or less the same and I'm looking for that as the finished edge and that. Try and just pop these in standing up here without the ladder. Okay, so that's lovely. Now, above there, we'll go another piece of stone. That's what I was talking about, that sort of detail. There you go, that's nice. Gives me a little wiggle room for taking a, a bit of cleaning time in. This is where the sun comes in uh, of the morning, so this will be the terrace, this will be the breakfast table. Somewhere here, instead of my work table, which is that, that will be a breakfast table, all set out for breakfast one day. Uh, around here, this will be a complete terraced area. So uh, imagine that. Hard to imagine it, but uh, if you look at it from a distance, um, as you can see, we've got our sail up so that uh, I've got a little bit of shade, but because the sun's coming from over there, We've got no chance unless I block the whole thing off, which I'm not really prepared to do. Okay, so we've got two stones in and you'll see the spigot coming out here. So this is going through here essentially. It's sitting somewhere like that. So I've drilled a hole through this, through this, through this, and given a little bit of a tolerance down there so that sits in nicely. Okay, so that's it, all the stones are made. Um, I'll take you up there in a second. Well, they're all glued in as well, so they're not going anywhere. Um, it's about 42, 44 degrees coming off this wall now. I'm not complaining, but uh, it's just a little bit difficult to use any tools with motors uh, or, or glues that need setting. Right, so that's the two top details done and finished. Uh, which have come out all right actually, not too bad. And that matches uh, exactly what's been done above on both corners. Okay, so the piece of stone uh, that's going to go horizontally above the doorway is also going to be the same size as the stone that runs vertically. So that's uh, that measures up at 200 mil. So I've put that mark on there already. I'll just stick a line down, and that'll follow round. So when I cut it, it'll be a little bit easier. But I want to concentrate on this end. This is where it's going to get complicated. So if the stone that's going vertically is 200, that means I need to keep in mind, and that's why I'm going to do a dotted line so I don't end up cutting it with the saw by accident. This part, at the moment we can say we need a full length of 900. Okay, so I've just drawn out uh, quite briefly um, the shape and profile of the keystone. So we are 160 at the bottom, uh, 180 at the top, so half of 160 is 80. Um, so that will give me my measurement here.
Okay, so this is the cut stone. This has got the angle for the key. Um, this is the end. This is the face side. The next stage here is to put a groove in the back of this. Fit. It's still heavy, but not ridiculously heavy. This is going to receive the the keystone. So I've got to clean all that lot up. I've got a marker line here that I can work to, that existing pencil line. But what we've got to do is put in a channel. Now, this is where it gets a bit complicated. Turn this round for you. Now, pretend that that is the girder that's running through the roof. Uh, this is going to sit like this. And what I want is for that, this piece here, to sit in there, right up and butt against there. So that's the cut I want to get out and remove that and that needs to be removed all the way along so I need to get this reasonably accurate because um, obviously this is only one of many jobs um, but um, it's nice, I appreciate the support that uh, we certainly got from uh, when this video came out on Sunday night and uh, Lynn and I appreciate it very much so thank you for that. But uh, keep subscribing, uh, keep ticking the like box and dinging the bell and that'll be great and then you'll find out when the next video is coming out. Uh, obviously this is going to come out in a few days uh, once I start to get this stone all fixed up and fitted in. Anyway, I'm going to get on with cutting this groove. gives you an idea of what's just come out so all the way along there now we could just try this piece of steel I suppose and see if that fits before we go upstairs so this has got to sit like that okay so just cut this stone uh, if you want to bring the camera oh, well, in. So you can see, because this is the dry run that you want to do, is yeah. that right? And the more I can do on the bench, the easier. Uh, and this is how it's going to be, be received up. Is it? I'll use the other side, it's a bit cleaner. Okay. But basically, that slot's in there. This all gets glued nice. around here. Let's get a little bit closer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so there'll obviously be another piece of stone here going underneath. Yes. Right, okay. So, but we've got to make it like a jigsaw puzzle because if you try and do it all in one go, we'll never get there. So I'm going to dry fit this, which means putting it in, seeing if it fits. Um, if it doesn't, adjust it. If it does, great. We'll just okay. make the, the other one. It's already heavy. Monday. Samson, do your best. 
uh, what I was hoping is I'd walk it up this side, swing it round. Oh my goodness. And put it straight in like this. Now you can see the girder where Steve's just about to position it. The key thing is, is uh, is this going to be in the way? Oh, you mean you wouldn't form her? Or is everything going to slide in oh, nicely? Oh, see. It's just going to be tight. That's going to be a tight yeah. slot fit. Wow. Now, from what I can see here, it's pretty neat to the girder, Steve. So, do you want it? To, you don't really want it to sit proud as it does at the moment. No, it's going to sit flush with this. Yes. What I'm now going to do is take the saw across the top edge. Okay. And remove some additional stone. I'm just going to go underneath here because I think you can see that there is a little. You can see the distance. Yeah. Be got careful, it. this doesn't fall. Yeah? No, I've got it. I'm just going to move back then. Now that you've said that. Enough, yeah, and you can see once we've got cement in here, glue in here, this is going nowhere. And then that keystone sits in there and really locks these two stones, the left and the right ones, yeah. together automatically. It's going to be sitting out the front. That was me stamping my foot. I've just been bit by a creature. Okay, but you get the idea. This oh, yeah, and I can also see that your uh, pencil line that you've got there. Uh, the this the one. hash yeah line. This is lining up. With that's it. lovely. That's lining up. We probably can't see that yeah. on the camera, but I can see it. And what we'll do here is, once we've ensured that this is a level, um, this will all be refurbed up here. Now, there's no point in putting winches on any of this. I was I did ask about that, didn't I, some time ago? I walk this down the stairs. <sighs> Very careful and gentle. I did feed Steve sort of pasta for lunch, such as, you know, the carbohydrate help with the stamina. So that was the dry run, everybody. Actually, I think it was good. Not too much wrong with that. Brilliant. Once I do what I need to do, and uh, maybe just run that saw through a couple more times. Anyway, so we know what we've got to do uh, for this one is that first part there, which was catching. Mm -hmm. um, and you also talked about doing something at the top here, didn't you? And this. also taking is that which is the top now? That's the top. Oh well, if you top. if you turn it over, you can see where your writing is. So that's the top. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is the top. That's the top with the letter B. Uh, I don't know what B stands for. What have I written? That's funny because I wrote B for bottom and T for top. Oh, okay. And they're the wrong way around. So that's the profile that goes inside that um, that girder. So you've had to take quite a bit out. Well, I just nipped out that piece of stone completely. It doesn't oh my have gosh, to, yeah. It doesn't have to be smooth because it's uh, the fact it's got some ridges in it all glue in nicely. Right, and it's also going to be, no one's going to see it, are they? No, that's the whole point. Yeah, yeah. got it. So that's going to go in now and uh, that should just slot in. You must have had to do about four dry fits, did you? Um, well, uh, I'm only doing this once, aren't we? So let's get it right. I know we work differently, but... Did you hear that, everybody? We work differently. We do. We, we definitely do. I think it's Steve's left-handed.
I just need to be a bit deeper on my initial cut. Uh, so this is the before stone, I suppose you'd say, that one there. It's just been cut to more or less the right length at the moment. And this is what we're looking for, that little profile there. And that's what the girder sits inside. Uh, that mark there, that's where the girder is anchored in. Now there's a weak point here, obviously on this stone. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to fix this stone to this stone because obviously it's not fixed at the moment, look. It's uh, the same principle as the other one, I'll just go along the top and I'll show you the fixing lugs or the spigots and that just gives you an idea of the profile. That's where I'm at at the moment, still a ways to go but the next stage is obviously to get this one all machined up and looking exactly like this. So cut into two pieces, use the other piece as the return edge, put the spigots in, put the holes in, put the groove in here and cut the section out here, you can see this. That takes quite a while to get that level down there with that grinder. Um, but nevertheless, it's got to be done and that's the only way it's going to, for me, it's going to be comfortable sitting. This is the, uh, the other side, from a view from the other side. So many people have said to me, um, it looks like we're coming on an archaeological dig. Some subscribers come, some friends come, and they see what we're doing and they really don't expect this kind of stonework to be going on. So it is like a bit of an archaeological dig and then you find a 3,000 euro coin in amongst the ground. And then, it, and then it is an archaeological dig. Uh, Lynn is, uh, I'll show you the coin, but uh, bit by bit. But uh, Lynn's just turned up. Yeah. I've got a very dusty Steve and a very dusty camera. And all I was going to say is you've also got that lovely little shell that you found. Uh, the fossilised shell. Yeah, a few days ago I found a fossilised shell. Uh, it was here. Oh, well, I've got it. Yeah. And I, we'll have a look at it later, but this, so this is where one of the uh, stones has gone in. I think you can see my hand now. Um, where, where are you? It was inside this one. Okay, what I'm showing here is that little fossilised shell stone shape. I'm just going to zoom in. And see if I can get that outline. It's very delicate. I think you can start to see it. It's like a little uh, mollusk shell. I think the kind of thing that you'd see stuck on the side of rocks that are just under the water now. Yeah, you can definitely see that now. That looks lovely. So that was part of another stone. And um, it was going to come out anyway, so I took it out. I don't think it's bad luck. We'll keep it there. Um, but we'll keep that as part of our treasure trove of things that we have found. If you look at it carefully, it's a whole shell in there. It's a whole shell shape. Whether it's a shell or not, I don't know. But it's a, definitely a whole shell shape. The whole thing is there. But that's proof that at some time, either it was seawater here, or that stone came from under the seabed. Um, one way or the other. I expect somebody's probably going to be able to tell me. Uh, we're in Abruzzo in Italy. Um, we're, we're on the Adriatic side and uh, any archaeologists out there or marine archaeologists I would imagine would be able to give us some advice. I'd love to know, I know Lynn would as well, and um, a little bit more information puts the history of this house together really. Now what we've got to do is, uh, this is obviously one of the horizontal stones going above the entrance and this is a stone that's got exact look exactly like this one. <coughs> so we're going to copy uh, copy this exactly. So I'll show you how I do that. I noticed here, I don't think they're cracks or hairline cracks, I think it's just part of the stone, but there's, I'll be keeping, um, I will be keeping a close eye on them, strangely enough, just to see what happens. It doesn't look like they wrap around the sides. Um, one wraps around the back there, there's a line here, somewhere here, uh, if I mark it with a pencil. Now, I've got to consider that. 
definitely. So what we need to do is to take a little closer look at that one. It does... Hmm. I can't decide whether it goes through whether we change the stone because it is one of the top stones. Now because it is, I do feel as though I need to change it and get the good one. What do you want me to do Steve? Right, I've taken a look at the stone and I think it would be wise to change this one round. I'm just a little bit concerned about that hairline there. I don't know whether it's a crack or whether it's a fault line but it seems to go across and then it seems to go I don't know if you can see it, uh, if the camera is in the right place you can. It goes down here like this. And it travels along here, along here and down there. Okay, right, yeah, let's definitely change it up. I'm going to change it up for that one there. That looks like a decent stone. I can't see any faults, hairlines or anything in it. I don't want to use the really big ones, uh, the, the ones on the ends, because I think I'll be able to use them for something else as, as they're, to be honest with you, they're now free because we've paid for the entrance, so um, we can use those for something else, and we'll probably be able to use this for something else as well, but the problem is here, if I cut a saw line through that, either the vibration of the saw, or some hammering later on, or some positioning up at the top, it may just cause that whole thing to crack. Thank you. 
we've got two stones, horizontal stones, one left side and right side now. I've loaded it with glue. So this is um, a rubberized uh, glue that just adheres to cement, like uh, bolts itself to it. And I need a lot in there to splurge around the girder when the girder sits in and it will sit just a little what I don't want really to do is the girder to sit against the stone I want the girder to sit in the glue does that make sense yeah okay, okay. yeah all right so let's get on with it as you can imagine these are really heavy it sits It's got to slide along now without my glove in it. Right. And obviously that. And now it's got to slide back. Yep. And in. In place. Oh wow. <laughs> right now, because that glue doesn't go off straight away. You've got some movement. I've got some time to be able to. Oh, I can see, yeah, I can see it. I'm we're going to try and get to the side because then... Just be careful about the Yeah, we can out. actually get a view of the girder with it. Yeah. Three different products that you're using. Quite nice. That's lovely. It's looking still, good to me. Still got a little bit of movement there, so what I need to do is come down the ladder. Okay. You can get out of the way. Keep going with the, the recording. Well. Good. Obviously, we're now looking at the other side because obviously two sides have got to go in, and then does the keystone go in last? One, right, okay, let's go over here. So this is the glue going in. I'm just coming on your other side, Steve. Yeah, there it is nicely. I can't wait for the keystone to be put in. Can you imagine the you know the time that he's used to do all of this? It's fabulous. It's just incredible what he's done. That's the colour when we got it from the quarry, and obviously it's this white. Icing sugar. Yeah, it goes in like uh, mm. marshmallows. And yeah, it is. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah, it does. It looks like it. Right, so that's ready. Made sure that on these bolts, I was looking spigots, at that strangely. That enough. the bolts go on easily, so yeah. I haven't got a problem thread. Oh, got it. So that's a double check. Yeah. But they can stay on. Thing is, for these two bits to be. The important thing is for these two bits is to be level at the top. Yeah. So that's why um, I'd adjust. When you get the second get one the up. Second one in there. Yeah. I'll just move out the way so Steve can lift yet again. So now we've got the right hand side. Okay, so that's the second one nearly in position actually. I just need my. Uh, what do you need? I need my glasses. Man. Your glasses? Yeah, they're down there. Careful where you run. Uh, oh, yeah, found them. We've got a dusty pair of glasses, but I have found them. 
ठीक है Now you can probably see the gap in preparation for the keystone. Here goes the super leveler. Not that. This will be right. All it's if this isn't level. Oh wow! Properly. Anything will do, but I've got a little stain. See, see how that works. Right, so that means that that one is out too far. That's what it means. What, the one on the right? Yes, it's just fine adjustments now. So what that needs to do is go in like that. Uh, this is interesting. And isn't it though? Yeah. Totally new. So if I get within half a, I would say, if I can get within half a mil, I'd be pretty happy actually. And what did I say, 99.9%? Just got that wobble back, you can hear it. Yep. But I can now adjust it, see, so. I'm pleased we haven't done this in sort of midday. Uh, I can't see a fag paper behind that. A cigarette paper is, is, would be more appropriate. That is done, and that is. Ooh, that's not much. Oh, is it right? Well, good morning on this sunny morning. Uh, it's the weekend, and uh, so it's been a very, very busy week and a very hot one. Uh, this morning, I am going to remove the former, the wooden former that's been in there for some weeks now, and uh, the two top stones are in. Um, I'm going to show you everything I've done, um, but I'm just going to keep you on the tripod at the moment and move you back and uh, just going to record removing some of the former I've, n I've got a funny feeling that it's going to be uh, not difficult to get out but it's going to be trapped in there and uh, I've got a the, the cross braces I can unscrew but the actual frame I may have to saw it out because the screws are on the other side of the wood anyway I'm going to get on with that
Okay, that seems to be it. Um, come out pretty easy actually. I just took a couple of the cross members out with a saw just so that I didn't disturb the stones, but uh, on feeling the stones, there's no way I could disturb them. They are absolutely locked in to the house now and they're not going anywhere. So uh, just gonna take you off the camera. And uh, right, so you sh should start to be able to see the stones. And what I've done is I've finished off the edge with a commercial foam and uh, that's not going to go anywhere so that's just filled the gap that stops any damp that stops any creatures going through that steel and through the back of the stone and it also beds the stone against the steel without the stone sitting on the steel like the first solution of uh, the rubberized um, uh, compound did and uh, so that's the internal joint. This piece of steel is a spigot which is uh, drilled into this and this and then it's set with chemicals so you could actually hang, hang a car from that and it won't go anywhere and then that's my hole for the keystone in the middle which is the the next process which is what you're going to see but if you go along to the left everything's straight uh, there's no there's nothing dropped at all about this whatsoever it's just stayed exactly in place. Right, so this morning we're going to be looking at this stone. Um, I've switched the stone over. Uh, the other stone I had, once I put the, um, albeit it's quite small, um, shape of the stone, or the front of the shape of the stone I want on, it was a little bit difficult to get out of that one stone. Um, you want to try and make uh, the stone work for you as much as you're working for the stone. This, is, this stone has been masonry before, which means that it will be relatively soft to work, and I know that that will be a good stone for me to work on. I've put a cut line along here, so that denotes the height of the stone and some overlap. So all I want to do is get the basic shape, um, and then what we'll do is we'll do some fine working on the front edge, the back edge, just an inch inside the top side edges. I'm going to leave the back side at the moment, but I know the overall sizes, so I'll go over those as, uh, as I do it, uh, one sort of measurement by one measurement. But what we're going to do at the moment is, um, so that's a good size. I know that my stones are 200 mil, and I've given it 270, I think I need 240, and then I'll just finally cut away the rest. So that looks, it's nice and square. One thing about choosing these stones, what I found, I mean I'm no expert, is that if you find a stone where you've got a flat edge to work from, it stops this from wobbling too much. And if you can find one with two or three flat sides, obviously this came out of the house, so it's going to go back into the house, uh, but we use it for a different purpose, which is fine. We've got plenty of these, um, in excess of 200. And uh, they'll be 30, 40 euros if not at the moment, uh, slightly more. Anyway, I'm going to get that line cut, so uh, I'll leave the camera running and put my protective stuff on. It's uh, again another sizzler, um, but so uh, just got to get on with it. Okay, so that cut quite nicely. Um, obviously the reason for the first cut is to get the stone the right height, as I said. But also it's a, it's a good test on the stone to see if there's any other cracks, any other faults. 
Uh, I don't really want to be doing this job twice. Um, as much as I enjoy doing it, the, we've got a diamond blade on the Makita. It's very powerful. Um, and what I like to do is to feel as though it goes in like butter. That was a perfect example. You saw the blade just cutting through and I'm not pushing on the machine. The machine is doing all the work itself. All I'm doing is supporting it. So what I intend to do from here is to um, turn it on its side. And I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a cut a uh, rough cut down the side. I'll turn it over and I'll do a rough cut down the other side. Uh, I'm, probably what's going to happen is this may snap off, which I'm wanting. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm going to get a big bolster chisel and stick it in the front down there. And just, you'll see how easy, <laughs> he says, um, how easy it is to, to pull that apart. Hopefully it should crack on its own, under its own uh, weight. Right, so it's all a bit dusty. Hope you can see okay. Um, right, so what I'm looking for... Uh, like I said, is... Uh, I'll try a little two pound hammer first. And uh, just give this a little clunk. There you go. Nice. Right, so that leaves me with uh, a nice chunk of stone. Uh, it couldn't actually be much better. I wanted it 150 deep, 170 deep, and I can get the full stone out at 200, so 170, I easily get that out. The width is 180, I believe. Yeah, 180. And it's widest because obviously it goes into um, a cone shape uh, and I'll easily get that out from front more or less to back yeah definitely the bottom you'll remember most of this is going to get cut away because I've got the steel that's got to be this is this back end has got to be channeled in a way that it fits in perfectly and uh, just going to walk and talk you through the all the stages of that it's going to take a good six hours to get this stone into shape um, but I feel as I've got a good start a better start than the other stone strange enough I'll use this as the face and at the moment it's not perfect but what I do with this machine here it's very very powerful and I just run it over with the blade running like that and just take off tiny surfaces of the stone all the way up just smooth as I possibly can because it does dig in very deep this and then what I can do is get the rasp file you've seen him before and I can just get that down flat um, I don't mind a little texture on the surface it doesn't have to be perfect um, but nevertheless that's how I'm going to do it so the next stage on this really is to start looking at how if you can all see this I'll turn it round so this is my basic shape, but I will measure again. And I want to get this in a position, so I'm going to get some scissors and cut this shape out now. And I'm just going to put pencil lines where that's going to go. Uh, yeah, I think that's my next job. So I'll go and get a pair of scissors. Uh, in fact, I have a Stanley knife. So this seems to be the shape I'm looking for in the keystone. 
Um, I'm just going to double check this, but I'm just going to put some. I'm just going to make sure 100% that this is the stone that I am going to use. Yeah, it's perfect. Couldn't be a lot better. So what I'll do is, I've got to decide. I'll use the cut edge as the base edge. So that's going to match in with my other stone work. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give myself a little bit of overlap on the stone so that I, I've got room to take that stone back. So we'll put it centrally. It looks about right. And all I want to do is to put put this edge down. So I don't need to keep looking at the stone wondering which is the top, the bottom, the side, everything else. Okay, so um, I measured the um, piece of paper upstairs again. Um, we're just slightly bigger than the stone upstairs, um, which is obviously we've got a bigger entrance down here. Everything seems to be good at the moment. I know there's a shadow being cast on this side for the camera, so I'm going to just show it. I'm going to try and turn the stone around. So what I've got is. Um, I've got measurements now on the stone and I'm just going to turn it around so that hopefully you catch the markings on the camera. So I'm trying to get out this lump here so that all this will be waste, all this, all this. Um, still about, it's still about 30 kilos so um, still be careful with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by cutting out the two larger sections. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way
understood you felt that way I guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away Right, okay, so that is a stone that's starting to look um, like it's supposed to. Obviously I've still got some flattening down to do both sides. So these are the sides, this is the top, this is the bottom, and now this is the face. And the idea is, is to be able to just pop that in, sit it down, and it almost supports on its own weight. Uh, but we're actually going to chemical it in as well with steel rods. Uh, just for belt and braces, which is um, more security, I guess. Uh, and obviously it's part of the seismic requirements. Every time I do something now, uh, we can't do anything in what would be called an old school way. Uh, the, um, the planning has become a lot more, let's say, detailed. Uh, in a way, surprising for the Italy that I used to know. Um, I'm not saying that it was slapdash by any means. What I am saying is that because of the, um, the planning regulations have changed, um, they're taking it much more seriously now. And they're ramping up the size of rebar, and the kind of construction that you take on and, and what, you, what you're going to get out of it. Uh, for instance, as an example, uh, the front entrance we were looking originally maybe at taking the whole arch away um, and, that, uh, and that would have been an opening with uh, stainless steel and glass in it. But that, uh, that was refused at planning, it was never going to make it through planning, we never would have got planning for it now, maybe before we could have, but definitely not now. So the structure that we've got now is uh, in keeping with the house as it was, which I quite like. Um, and the maximum size opening we could have was 1.4 metres in width. Uh, and that is it. Other than that, they were going to refuse me to get on with this. And obviously they needed to know that I was competent in doing this opening because it's, it's quite an engineering role really. And you've just got to work through it slowly, bit by bit. And obviously it's going to get checked when I finish the work. So. Um, you know, there's no cutting corners here, it has to be done properly. Um, everything is visual out in the open. And what the video helps to do also is not just present a vlog to you, it also gives um, the planners or the architect an inside visual of what I'm doing so they can have a review and either they can check along the, along the route so that they can say if you could do this and this, that would be good, or they can do a final check and say Okay, uh, I'll, we will run through the video in full and we'll see how that work was um, completed. But um, I'm pretty confident that uh, we won't have any problems because uh, we're about belt and braces really on this. We've done it, uh, everything and more. Um, the architect often tells me that uh, you're doing too much, Steve. Um, but um, I'm quite happy. He's very happy the way I'm doing it. I'm quite happy. Um, you always think you can do things better. But uh, what you've got to remember in this heat is you need to get on with the job and finish finish the jobs. That gives me, I'll bring the camera around afterwards, but um, that gives me the shape I'm looking for. And we'll start to flatten down these edges. What you don't want to do is to take off too much because obviously we can, we can take stone off, but we can't put it back on.
Okay, I've just brought the camera into the sun, um, the body of the camera, so I won't leave it here very long because it's uh, plus 40 at the moment. Can't see the worker either. Um, right, I've got it. That's the stone. Um, if I put the camera this way, it doesn't. I don't think it casts a shadow on it so much. Right, I've cut the stone uh, within the tolerances that I want to at the moment. So you can see the pencil line. You can see the slight taper uh, coming down here, which is what I'm looking for. See the pencil lines here. Uh, the rough size is good. Uh, the sides are fine at the moment. So what that does is that gives me the shape that I want. I'll come down off the ladder and I'll just explain where I am with the uh, the keystone now. So this is the important stone, we've been talking about it. This is the profile that I've drawn from the stones that are going to meet this. So this is upside down at the moment uh, in terms of how it's going to go in. So this is the profile, we go around the other side now. So I've got to remove all this and and something up here as well and also I'm probably gonna have to remove a little piece here now because I've got that little bar it probably doesn't make a lot of sense but it will do by the time I have finished it uh, another weak point on the stone here so I've got to be careful about that because there's quite a lot of weight there and then there's a bit of weight there if you manhandle it too much it's gonna crack but once it's in it'll be there forever this is the uh, the little template I've done now you can start to see, that's the original one, I'm going to make one out of cardboard so it'll be more rigid and it'll give me a more accurate reading. This was just a rough, a rough template, but you can see I don't need to take a piece off of each side of the stone because I can line that up now on the, on the right hand side. I know it's the right size, I'll double check the cardboard and I've got the line at the bottom and there's just a little lip at the top but I'm not worried about that, I'm not worried about the height of it, I'll, I'll probably leave that and once that's flattened out a bit because that's the surface that needs cleaning up, sorting out uh, the edges, this one will just be cleaned up but I'll use the information I've put on this, the data I've put on the side to take out of the stone and it won't move at all but if we get this right it's going to look fantastic that's plan A. Uh, haven't got a plan B, Don't really don't have one. Um, hopefully I've got the confidence to get this in uh, in one go, but uh, uh, we don't know. We'll see how that goes. I'm always, I always accept that uh, I might not get it right. I'm not a stonemason, but uh, yeah, so that's my next job. I'm going to change the battery on the camera. I'm just going to wait till it gets uh, a little bit later in because it's about quarter past six in the morning here and I don't want to make too much noise. We haven't got many neighbours but uh, the grinder will certainly wake up uh, the neighbour without any worries at all and probably all the village to be honest because the sound will go straight down the valley. So, Okay so this is crunch time <coughs> and that means working on the keystone. What you'll find is I've got a load of uh, lines on it now. I've done a second measure and I'm just taking you around it and the idea is, is to get this with as many flat sides on which I think I've done now so that when you do turn the stone over you're not resting the stone on a wonky edge because uh, obviously you're not going to get any purchase on the uh, when the grinding machine sits there it's very powerful I need something very positive for it to sit down so that cut is very clean very straight
And I'm just going to offer this up. It was looking pretty close just then. Ah. It's not looking too bad. It's starting to... It's just that, that top edge. Taking a tiny bit out at a time. Now, that's going in as you can see. But I've definitely got stone against stone at the top. Now, I also... I've got to take a section, see, stone against stone, and that's what it does. Oh, be very careful here. So, to go in. Okay. Alright, so that's going nice. So we've got a couple of things to do. I'm going to do this as a as a proper first fit, as a dry fit. Okay. Right, that's almost a perfect fit. I've just got a tiny bit of grinding to do around this spot here and this spot here, but not too much because otherwise. It'll fall down too far. I know how to do it, so bit by bit. Right, that's a perfect fit. Just taking the stone to the end of the bench. Uh, where I can start to work. So the stone is quite stable here. I'm just going to work the rasp file and the sandpaper and see how far I get. Right, that's a flat top. Now to the edges. Okay, there we go. That's it. Right, I haven't told them this yet, but I was going to put flat edge on that. But I quite like it because it's got all the old, old hammer marks in there. I'm going to leave it, I'm going to put it in place, and I'm going to see what Lynn says. But I'm not going to tell her. This is when you don't want to drop it. Right, that's a snug. That's a 
snug fit. Now. Right, there's my paper. I'm going to slide that in there. One in there. And one in there. Okay, if that stone comes to a, a break stop on those two bits of paper, it's going to stay in there, that has I've done my job. You're getting the idea, aren't you? Just have to get everything in the same place. That's it. The trick is, is to get it in position, get the two pieces of paper sitting there like that and let go. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared. Okay. I've got enough confidence that that's going to stay there and get the camera off the tripod and give you the first look round and see if you can see what I see. Okay, camera's getting hot, that's not a surprise. Uh, this is the gap up one side. There's a piece of paper, and that's acting as a break at the moment, stopping that falling out. This is the left-hand side, wherever it is, there you go. So you can see it wrapping around underneath all the way. And there's your piece of paper up the top there, acting as a break on that stone. That's the finish of the stone now, which you're going to see. And I'm actually going to walk away from it, because I feel like it's not going anywhere. It's being held on by two pieces of paper at the moment, and that's how delicate that is. So that's a keystone, and that's finished. Wow. Two pieces of paper at the top, Lynn. Yeah, I can see. And that's breaked, the, oh whole, the whole stone. Oh, I love it. So what we need to do now is to glue that in position. I'm gonna turn the camera off, and I'm gonna give the camera a good cool down in the house, because it's getting very hot. Can I just uh, film you and show how hot and what the situation is. It's yeah, it's not going to be a great look, you, is it? Can you see how Steve is absolutely uh, dripping if there's wet? Any, if there's Would anything... you like to turn round? Uh, the t-shirt is not two colours. It's not a pale grey and a slightly darker grey. It's if just any, If there's any companies out there that make any anti-sweat equipment <laughs> that they can send to me free because I don't get anything free. I'm just joking. No. It would be helpful because I am absolutely leathered. Yeah. But and uh, can I've got to keep going, sir. And can I just say, it's nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah, so I've got that fitted between, uh, I think it's half past seven and nine o'clock. So you've so, done really well, but no, I was sort of hours on that stone. I was sort of comparing. It's nine o'clock in the morning for the heat of the temperature that we've okay, actually so what got. Okay, so what do you think of the stone? Oh, what, I, no, what do you think of the finishes? Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. And can I just say, oh, you know, it's got an authentic look. It really should have Steve made me because that's what it is. But what about the face? I like it. I like the face. I, I don't want the face to be smooth. I actually like the ruggedness. What? And very dusty. So this is the view from the inside. So I've got some tolerances to put all my glue in. Tiny gaps here and there, but all that will disappear. This is the whole inside at the moment. But I'm going to have to switch this camera off. I can I hardly not hold the bottom. It's a metal plate and it's too hot. So uh, pile it high. So this will give me a good 
This will give me a good base. is a final fit. Don't need the paper anymore obviously. Oh, I can feel the glue is hit. If you like what you've seen, if you can subscribe, it helps the channel grow. If you can ding the bell, ding the bell, ding the bell, um, tick the like box, and share with your friends. If you know anybody who likes stone masonry, they might like this. Uh, I'm not a stonemason, but uh, I'm quite meticulous in how I've approached this. I hope, anyway. And I hope you've, uh, I hope you've seen that. Send any comments you want, ask any questions you want. We'll answer them anyway. We we'll always answer every question that we get properly. We don't just give it a thumbs up or a smiley face. Uh, Lynn also is meticulous. She's a people person, so she's answering all the questions. And if she's got any technical questions, she'll throw them by me. I'll either answer them myself or she'll listen to what I've got to say and then answer it, uh, which is great. So uh, it's more, it's as important for Lynn to be involved and just me doing this. Uh, it's teamwork, it takes two of us, or it takes three of us because it takes Button as well, because Button makes me laugh. And that's, uh, that's a good thing. Anyway, I'm signing off for now, so uh, we'll see you next time.